So I uh, will go over how I check when the run is finished, how I look at the data and, uh, and um, uh, see if the quality is good, and then I uh, go through um, uh, generating the uh, FASTQ files and send the email to notify people that their data is ready. First, uh, all the runs <coughs> we do in our facility uh, are transferred over this server that is called um, Black and Blue. Um, and we have a specific location. So I will go to one of the runs that, I will use one of the runs that was done for this course, um, or exactly the second, the Paradigm 76 um, run. So um, I know that you did some command line on Friday. I will change directory to that specific path. Uh oh, sorry. And always, the, uh, in this case, uh, the next seek data is uh, stored in a location that is called next seek data, and then next seek output. And then that, I think, was the 16.0609. No. No, not 16.14, I'm sorry. <laughs> OK. So when I check if the run is done, I'm looking for um, some files that are called uh, um, run completion. So it will be the run completion status and the RTA complete text file. Uh, when I see that these two files are in that folder, I will go to my own computer and use an Illumina application that is called Sequencing Analysis Viewer. What's the name of the file that comes out of this? Mm -hmm. I want to, so I wasn't here on Friday, mm -hmm. and I don't know how much everybody else already has, and I should just shut up and wait till somebody catches me up. But I have no idea. What, where are you typing this? What is the program? This is on the server. So the I think at this okay. point, so you, don't, you don't have access to this okay. server. Okay, you couldn't get onto this machine. OK, but, right. so, but in your own okay. lab, if you have a sequencer, you will have to transfer your data to a location. And okay. that, that will be the way to log into the okay. location and then. Okay. And, um, okay. And things like the 1406 or numbers, you just. That, know, you're okay. So many numbers. So that you no, so, so, okay. Maybe I have to explain this. Uh, when a run is done, the way that uh, the machine is outputting the run name will be the date, which is the year, oh, the, month, the year, and month, and the day. Sure, and course. then the name yeah. of the instrument, which is in this case NS500. Okay. Uh, but it can be a completely different name. And yeah. then will be the number, this one, 0004, is the experiment number. So it's the fourth run that was done on that instrument. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it's the flow cell name. So that is the order. Thank you. <laughs> okay, and the files that we are interested to see if the uh, if the run completed are the RTA complete text, which means real time analysis. This is one of the softwares that are running on the instrument and that is doing the base calling. So if this one is completed, this means the run is completed. Also, um, there is another file which is called run completion status XML. So I think if I go through that one. But if that one is there, this means the run is complete. But if you go through that one, it's a status that will tell you that the run is completed. So at this point, my run is completed. Um, there are, Illumina has two, diff, two, another, two other softwares that it's using. And one is this sequencing analysis viewer. This is a completely independent piece of software that can be run on a completely different computer than the sequencer. And um, unfortunately, it doesn't work on Mac. It's only on PC. <laughs> Actually, all their softwares are only for PC, not for Mac. They have, they have, they, they have only some application. I don't know what is the reason, but uh, I know that uh, there are people that complain about it. And I, uh, so I go to this software and I load the run. The way I'm loading the run is clicking on Browse. Um, by the way, the software can be downloaded from Illumina.com. Um, and then I, co I go to that specific location where my run is. So the... But you have to have access to the raw data. 
Yeah, this no, is. There's no point in having right. 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 Sorry. The most of us will never have to do exactly. this. Right. Exactly. Right. 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 But it's when she gets to seeing what the quality looks like, the, and they give you back, and you ask for what the quality scores are, and you see something that may look funny, then you'll know to call back the CPC center and say, this is not perfect, right? Yeah. Can you tell me why? Can you rebind this? Can you do something? That's kind of what, that's why. No, it's really useful. Okay. I just wanted to make yeah, sure you that, do you know, this I don't have to, like, record. Right. You know, you yeah. don't have to. It's just that if you want to, you, you can do it, definitely. What's the file extension for the raw data? Uh, what do you mean? The like dot txt? Oh, in this case, before uh, FASTQ files are generated, will be dot bcl, which means okay. base calls okay. files. So I will hit refresh, and all the statistics for the run will load into this software. Um, mm -hmm. I find this piece of software very useful because um, you can uh, see the uh, status of the run and uh, what that means that my run is run for 168 cycles. It, it extracted 168 cycles, did base calling for 168 cycles, and did quality scoring for 168 cycles. So everything went as expected. Then I have the flow cell chart, which is a um, heat map for the flow cell. And um, uh, everything is a drop-down menu, so uh, you can go through different kind of stuff, like intensities, like Q30s, um, whatever you are interested. I think it has also the error rate. Yeah, the error rate. Usually I go um, and look for intensities over here. Um, and you can go by cycle. And you can see everything for all the cycles, and these colors will change. It always looks like uh, some tiles are on the low range, sometimes are on the high range. But uh, you have to look at the scale, because sometimes the scale is really close, so it's not something bad. If the difference will be, let's say, here 5,400 uh, 5, and then 540, that will be bad. But in this case, it looks good. Then you can look at the data by cycle, which uh, shows you the quality over the all uh, 168 cycles. Why 168? Because it was 76 yeah. read one, 76 read two, and then there were two index runs, eight cycles each. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I didn't say anything about that. Um, so the way that um, you can see, this is the read one, and it went for 76 cycles. Even if you can't really see it's up to 76, it's, it stops before the uh, 80. And then there are some things going on for the index read, and then goes to read two for another 76 cycles. Um, again, you can look for different um, stat uh, statistics you're interested in. This will be the quality of bases at Q30 and above. Um, that is the index read. That is the index read, and uh, some uh, some parts of the index read are uh, more. So we have to have a very uh, good diversity of bases. And some of the uh, index uh, cycles are more diverse than the others. So this is why you can see that this is really high and this is not so high. Yeah. And what about the very beginning as well? Um, is the way that the run looks in the beginning. It's the, the, the run uses the first five cycles for um, calibration and focus and and it starts a little bit lower, but then goes. It's not terrible. I mean, it's the first cycle. It's about 75, maybe, and then goes up. And yeah. Um, this looks like a system. Run when you look at yes. Okay. Yes. Definitely. It looks like a good run. Um, I can pull out bad runs, but maybe I should not do that yeah. today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, they do happen. 
Yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Nothing is perfect. <laughs> um, for these next three runs we did so far, nothing looked bad. Everything looks actually really, really nice. And um, hopefully we'll stay like that for now. Yeah. But we have uh, pr we had previously high seek runs that were not so great. It's, it's, it varies and it's not necessarily an instrument problem, can be a library prep problem, can be some other chemistry problem. Uh, okay, so then we have the data by lane, uh, which uh, shows the cluster density. And you can see two kind of boxes here. One is the blue, one is blue and one is green. The blue represents the raw cluster density. So when, the, when a run is started, uh, the run goes for about four or five cycles, and then it stops and the real-time analysis gets on and does the uh, cluster detection and then it, 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 it counts the clusters and gives a raw cluster density. Then the run resume and goes for another um, 20, it goes up to cycle, cycle 25, uh, 25 and at 25, uh, when 25 cycle is uh, it's done, uh, it, it's calculating how many of these clusters have good quality so they will pass the the, the filtering. They have some parameters that the cluster have to um, to reach, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we'll, we'll pass the filter. Otherwise, the, the, the analysis will ignore those clusters. Yeah, so this is why we have the, the, uh, raw, the uh, raw cluster density and pass filtering so I'm boxes. The top is the raw, always the, the instrument. Yeah, okay. always the instrument will find more. And the green boxes, those the, 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 the pass, the pass okay. quality yeah, filtering. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and um, there is the quality score distribution and quality score heat map that um, will tell me if a run is good or not. We usually look at this one to see the, the total score, so this is the Q30 basis, total Q30 basis for the whole run, and we wanted to see it over 80%, and this is 84%. Um, the next tab I'm looking at is the summary tab, and here I have more, um, more statistics. So uh, I have the um, cluster density per tiles for each individual run. Oh, uh, sorry, this one. <laughs> Uh, and then I have the pass filtering. In this case, pass filtering, 81% of the clusters that were found pass filtering. And then I have other things like phasing and pre-phasing. So when, when the sequencing goes, the chemistry is not perfect. And some of the molecules are falling ahead or are falling behind or jumping ahead sequencing. And that will be calculated into phasing and pre-phasing. So phasing is when uh, molecules fall behind sequencing and pre-phasing when they jump ahead. And usually it's one with one base. And another thing is that every time when we do a sequencing run, we add one extra cycle just for, uh, this, for the software to do these calculations. If I want to sequence 100 bases, I do 101 is for, for the phasing prephasing uh, estimation. Um, then I have uh, this column that it says um, it's the total number of... So what do you want to see as a good number in the phasing prephasing? Uh, usually we want to see under 0.5 for yes. both of them. Okay. Um, if it's under 0.2, it's even better. But if we see numbers one and above, something went wrong. It can be a um, reagent contamination, or maybe something the, the base composition of the library is not even, and then the software has problems, and sometimes it's the flow. So all these, in, in the instrument, all the chemistry goes through these tiny tubes that can be clogged very easily, and the flow will stop or will be obstructed, and that will be what, seen. What does the software do in, say, poly A or poly B stretch? I don't think the software sees that. It doesn't have, so it's not like the old, the, um, what was the most terrible machines? I couldn't read through those. No, no I'm, just worried, I'm just wondering about the spacing. Yeah. If it's, if it's a non-polymeric stretch, let's say you have A and 
No, it, you, you can't see it in here. It's, it's just the numbers that you know is not looking good, but you, don't, you have to go and investigate. Will not, the software will not tell you that. Um, I think I forgot what I was about. Um, Oh, the reads, yes. I thought I, I had to say something more about the phasing per phasing. The reads uh, will be the, uh, the total number of reads per each lane. So this is in megabases. And then the total uh, number of reads that pass filtering, and usually it's slower than the, um, the, the first number. And then the uh, Q30 bases are the total uh, bases that are um, quality Q30 or above. This, uh, this way is, uh, this way, this um, numbers are um, in calculated in the logarithmic scale and it's uh, the, the FRED score. I'm not too familiar how they do it, but there, there is a, a literature about it. <laughs> but I have a question now. That's the, Q, that's the percent of past filter reads that are Q30? Yes, Q yes, right? yes. Okay. Yeah, everything, uh, it's calculated for what passed filter. Okay. So that's the same thing as what? <coughs> so that's the ratio between your reads and your reads, basically. Is that right? Mm. No, this is 84% from these number. Yeah. Oh, from these yeah. number? Yeah, yes, yeah. 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 It's, uh, so it, it's going and calculating. Uh, what is passing filtering and then takes that amount and does more calculations and evaluates how much of the bases are um, very good quality. <laughs> and then it tells me uh, the yield will be um, in gigabases. I think it's, it's pretty much this number, but in gigabases. I'm not sure. I'm, I usually I don't look at this number. Um, the cycles that are error rated and um, this is, they, they are 75, so I think I, I omitted to say that everything is per read, so this is for read one, and then I have read two, which is the first index, read three, that is the second index, and then read four, that actually is the read, the, the reverse read, read two. <coughs> so uh, the error rate will be calculated for 75 cycles. This is the length of my, uh, my uh, read one. Uh, the error rate is calculated based on um, this library that we use and it's called uh, Phi X. So everything we sequence, we spike this library in because uh, the Phi X is a very, has a very small genome that was really well sequenced before and the software is able to, uh, to align it to the genome in real time and then do calculations for um, pass fil uh, so, yeah, cluster density pass filtering and then um, uh, error rates. And based on the error rate, you can know if your run was good or not. So the, sorry, the phi x, I mean it's a phage DNA and mm -hmm. then it's just chopped into pieces and it's in random places on the cluster and yeah. looking for it. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out. It's, it, uh, when, we, when we load a library into the flow cell, we volumetrically, um, uh, spike about 1.5 percent of this uh, library. Okay. So uh, we mix it with our own library and everything is randomly on the flow cell. It's supposed to look as it's our own library. Yes, right. exactly. And it already has the adapters added to yes, it. Yes, so yes. Yeah, yeah we, we do, yeah. we do buy this from Illumina. Illumina is selling this. Yeah. It's coming in tubes of 10 yeah. microliters, a 10 nanomolar. If you do this with the core service, is this something that they do standard? Yes, it's standard. It's, we always do that uh, because people are interested on how their run looked, so they want to see these numbers. And it's good for us as well. But I just want to say, not in the sequencing center, they do that. So I don't know what GeneLens does, and I don't know if the Genome Center does it. So we I know that the Illumina recommends it, yeah. so they may. Okay. I don't know. But it takes up space on the flow cell, right? So, yeah, 1.5%, so, I mean, that's yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. When I got it, they didn't, they didn't say that. They didn't mention it, but they still may be done. Yeah, Just to yeah, do yeah. the quality control for their run, they still may do it. I was going to say, how do they do some of those quality control things without an internal control
No, it is a union job. Yeah. yeah. Something you might not even buy. We used to do it that way all the time until somebody came up with the idea of spiking. Yeah. yeah, initially initially when we had the genome analyzers, we used to have one lane that was the control lane, the FIX lane. Yeah. But one lane was kind of expensive to have all the time. Yeah. So when the high six came along, they they thought it's a waste of money. And in that case we run a while without the FIX, but we had problems and Illumina came with, for, I think I heard that Mona actually had, had the idea first to, to spike FIX, <laughs> but we didn't do it, and later on uh, we it's started doing it. This is this is the next seek. It's the one you. Okay. Yeah, it's it's okay. the one that you loaded on uh, Friday. Okay. No, I just couldn't remember. It's not exactly it's that run. But it no, this no, is not exactly no, that run. But it's the instrument. Yes. There was nothing that was loaded on Friday. Right. right. That's what I thought you said. That's right. why I was confused. Right. Okay. Right. So yeah. is this from the data that we had yes. from the we arrived? Yes. 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 Remember I said you in yes. Excel sheet with those yes. stacks. You, if you look back at that Excel sheet, you'll see that. And I okay. want to explain where she got those from. Right. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so in this case, the percentage of FIX at the line was about 0.4%. So we want to see, um, I mean, we, we spike 1.5% volumetric, but uh, we don't get 1.5 aligned. Uh, Everybody is like, why it's so low? Why it's not 1.5? You said that you are loading 1.5 because uh, it's volumetric. The, the sample might cluster really well and then they, the, 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 <laughs> the percentage of the uh, FIX comparing with the percentage of the real sample clusters is really low. And is that representative of the uh, underrepresentation of your sample clusters as well? No, the, the sample clusters are well. This is just the for, for the FIX. Right, you're, you're adding 1.5%. Yes. Is five, yes. And it's only seeing point four. Yeah, but it is the way is the way is the way that. I think the answer to that, if I understood, mm -hmm. and I might have not, is that if you have a really good library, it might cluster incredibly well and hence take up more. Yes. Of the, you get more reads than you expect. So yeah. the percentage that's phi x goes down. Whereas if you have bad clustering for yours, then the phi x might have more than what you expect. So you're saying it's 1.5 would be bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, it, oh, probably if you if you get 1.5, probably your sample is slower yeah. cluster okay. density. If you got 10, it would be really bad. Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, there is the error rate for for the phi x, which is in this case 1%. Um, at one point, Illumina was saying that uh, the error rate for the uh, phi x should not be more than 1.52 percent per lane, but now they took away completely the error rate, and they say uh, that we should not look at all uh, at all the error rates. We still do, though. In in internal. Is that the reason for loading it? <laughs> I know. It's, it's, yeah, they were like, oh, we are not we we. we we don't look at the error rate, so if you have any problems, we are sorry. This is just a thing that we do, but we don't actually look at. <laughs> I don't know what is the reason. Probably uh, there are centers that get very high error rates, and they had usually when you have problems with your run, you call Illumina Tech Support, they look at the run, and then they decide if they'll replace the reagents or not. And if everybody's calling and asking for replacements, they have to find a solution to get less replacements. And that might be one of the explanations. I don't know. <laughs> this is what I suspected. So looking at this run, this, uh, I was looking at the analysis tab and summary tab. If something goes wrong, I can look into the images. And what is cool is that if you go and click on one of these um, tiles, it should open an image. But I think uh, the way. I think the way that Michael set up this instrument, he uh, chose not to save all the images, so I'll have to figure out something that has an image. Yeah. Ah, yeah. 
So uh, this will be the tile. The tile is a, is a very small part of the flow cell and, us and usually of the lane of the flow cell and usually is squared. Um, so this will be the whole tile and in this you can see that the, the white dots are the clusters and then uh, the software picks some parts of the uh, tile and zooms in and you can see the clusters. Uh, now with the next seek, it seems like they have the red and the green, but previously, or um, we still actually do have for the high seeks, they are uh, per base. So you have four images, you have an A, a C, a G, and then a T. And you will see how the cluster looks. Um, when you look into the images, you should be able to see clear dots. If you see clusters like, let's say, this blob here, um, it might not be so good. It's usually a sign that the, the library was loaded too dense. Mm -hmm. But this one did very well. We had 80% of the clusters that passed filtering, so we should not be worried about this blob here. It's, it's fine. Also, they um, increased the power of their um, cameras now, and they are able to, um, to, uh, to wow. detect much better the clusters. Okay, so uh, this was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that is amazing. Yeah. It's just. And actually, if you have problems with your run, you can go through all cycles because here you have all your cycles. Um, of course, if you pick to, ch to, to save all images. And um, yeah, I'm sorry, it doesn't have image for this one. But anyway, you can go through all cycles and then look to see where the problem started. And you can do some troubleshooting using the images. You can go by lane, you can go by the top of the bottom sur surface, and then you can go by swath, which is left, middle, right, because they, they have the lane, and they uh, split the lane in small pieces, and they call it swaths and surface, because it goes and scans the top surface of the flow cell, and then goes back and scans the second, the, the bottom um, surface of the flow cell. I think we're all familiar with the, uh, the size Mm -hmm. What are the sizes of these? Uh, <laughs> the size of the run file? The image yeah. file, right? Um, yeah. th we, yeah. don't sa we don't save, save the raw image yeah. file because it's too big and we don't, the, the computers that the instruments are attached to are, are, don't have so much memory. Usually a computer, a high c computer is about two terabytes and it has one terabyte for one so the high seek has an A and a B side. You can load two flow cells at a time. One terabyte will be for position A and one terabyte for position B. So you'll have a D and a uh, E drive for that. And so then when you're reviewing these images, these, the these are thumbnails. So they are okay. small, um, I don't know, small, JPEG. yeah. Yes. Yeah, they are JPEG. Uh, okay, my run looks good. I'll go now and generate. Uh, so for, in this case, we know that um, we uh, had. Yeah, that that this is this is a very nice run. I would like to see all the runs in my lab looking like this one. <laughs> um, this uh, run was four lanes of a uh, library that was actually a pool of um, sixteen. Yeah, 16, 16 libraries. Um, each of the library that was in this pool had barcodes that allows, allows me to go and um, pull out the FASTQ file for each of the library. But in order to do that, I need to um, generate a sample sheet that the, my, the software I'm running can use and do the demultiplexing. And again, there is another piece of software that is called Illumina Experiment Manager. And again, it runs on PC <laughs> that allows me to create these sample sheets. And I will go and I have the Illumina Experiment Manager open. I click on Create Sample Sheet. And I can create sample sheets for any of the three uh, platforms that Illumina is selling. Uh, and I will pick the next seek because this is what I'm interested in. And then what I want to do, if I go too fast, let me know. Uh, if uh, what I want to do is to create FastQ only, and this is the only option for other instruments, you may have more than one option. 
And then I, I will have to put some uh, information in here. I don't know the barcode, the kid barcode number, but I will just do like a name, run three. And then um, the sample prep I use is the TrueSeq HT, which means TrueSeq High Throughput Kit, is the, the library prep kit. And I have the index reads, two index reads. I can put, these, these are optional here, the experiment name can be RNA, course, investigator name, my name or one name that I want. And then the date, if I want to change it, usually I use the date, the, the current date, the today date. And then the run was paired end and it was 76 cycles. So I'll change this number to 76. One thing I didn't know before last week was that this uh, way, you, the, in, in the way you um, create a sample sheet will trim or not trim your reads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, by default it seems like it's doing the trimming mm -hmm. and I didn't change that for one of the run and I think I changed it for the second one. So in this case I would just... Somebody mentioned that. Why is yeah. 32 and yeah. go to Michael Ronan and that's the answer she got. So it was great that somebody noticed that actually. Yeah. Because this is really important that during the pre-processing. I think from what I heard it was good that the trimming was done yeah. because then nobody had to go back and do right. the trimming. So I'll just leave it on. And if I click next, now I, I go and I add the uh, I can add how many uh, samples I have there. So I'll add the, uh, the rows. And I have 16. OK, and I already uh, have my Excel sheet that um, the lab provided me with to, uh, to uh, fill the information for the samples. So I will just go and paste it in here. And I think there was. Okay. Okay, so if I can skip, so anyway, you can go and put the samples in, and then you can go and add the index. So when you add the index, D701, which is the first index, will automatically put the sequence. You don't have to go and look online for the sequences. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with the second index. And in the end, you will have a, a sample sheet that looks, I already have it online, so I can just go and will look like this. So uh, the top will be um, the version of the software I'm using, what is the experiment name, the date I did, uh, the, I generate the sample sheet workflow, this and that, and then um, you go to the samples and it will be the RNA, the, D, the, uh, the first index, the second index, and then the experiment name. And it, what I do, I go, so when I list this thing, you can see that there are many subdirectories. Uh, the ones that load the uh, information to the sample uh, analysis, uh, sequencing analysis viewer is the interop. So it, this is why you have to have access to the server when you are loading the data into the sequencing analysis viewer. But anyway, what I'm interested, I go to the data, intensities, and base calls. And uh, here, I have to run uh, a command line, which is, the command line I'm running will be this one. Uh, I will try to explain. So the first part here, no, it's short. <laughs> Uh, is the, the, the path to where the, the software... Actually, when you highlight it, when you, you highlight can't it, see it. Can't read it. Oh. <laughs> anyway, yeah, the first part is uh, where the software that is doing the BCL converting to... Uh, the BCL converter is um, located on the server. Then these are some uh, parameters for the cluster to run things um, uh, into <coughs> in parallel jobs. This is informatics, so I, I know that I have to put it there. Then uh, where my run is, so it's seek Illumina run, so the path to my run, and then where I want to put the FASTQ files. And I submit this job, or the job to the cluster, I let it run for a while, and then when I go, I have my FASTQ files in there. 
And after the FOSQ files are generated, I can go back to this, the, the SAV and click on the indexing tab and see the statistics, see how much of each of the sample uh, is, it, it had, it, it's there. So the, how, how much of the total number of reads corresponds to each of the sample. And, so um, 16 samples and yeah. Yeah, yeah, remind me that they said it's each one. Yeah. 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 We don't see here even numbers and rarely I see even numbers because we do this, uh, we, we have to do a very precise quantification. Uh, to do quantification we use qPCR but qPCR is really tricky and it, people easily can mess up and get wrong numbers and then they think they did it right, they do the sequencing and they see these numbers and like why my sample is 16 percent and um, one sample is 16 percent and the other one is 0.5 percent. It's because you didn't quantify it right. It's they're mostly, if you look at like the groups of four, they're pretty I think yeah. this one actually looks uh, looks okay. The previous one, the Perden 101, was looking, uh, I think, even better. They were just two outliers. Um, does, yeah. it, is it, does it matter? Except that it affects the number of reads that it's, you get? Exactly. It depends on how much coverage you need for your sample. You might be okay. You might be okay, but you might want more reads yeah. and then if you can get the, the, that number of reads from, from one run, you might be upset to do two because you have to pay twice, and it's not fun. And you have too, too much data, and your one never finishes. Uh, <laughs> no, that is not the case. The run will finish, but if you have too much, I don't think there is too much data. I, I never heard people complaining about too much data. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> All right. So then, if, so then, this is. And then. The PCL2 file becomes a fastq file by magic somehow. No, I just show. I'm running that command You're line, and then the the, uh, the I submit the job to the cluster, yeah. and uh, the, the 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 there are scripts that are running and doing yeah. this. And it spits out the fastq, which yes. is what you guys started with when you started doing yes. the analyses. Right. This is the the gen, yeah the fast queue generation because uh, when the the sequencer is done with sequencing you have uh, binary files and uh, all the the programs that are used for data analysis will not be happy if you feed them with uh, binary files and you have to give them text files so you have to 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 convert the BCL to the fast queue first. So this is the first step of step of the uh, or is considered secondary analysis because the the primary analysis is the base calls, mm -hmm. the uh, the base calling, and after that you go into actually uh, uh, align the reads and uh, do other stuff with the reads. So together with the so in a sense there are two things happening. There's a con conversion from a binary. To the text code to a text mm -hmm. code, and then there's the demultiplexing. Yes, they which are is simultaneous. Recognizing the adapters yeah. and then splitting the, yeah. the reads uh -huh. into their yeah. their folder, basically. Yeah. If you don't think of it this way. So yeah. there's a distinction between the adapter, which is what is on. You don't have to use a barcode, right? The adapters you always have to have because that's what binds to the flow cell. No, yes. no, I okay. know. Okay. Yeah, but then yeah. she demultiplexes according to the barcodes. Yes. Yeah. Not the adapters. That's no, the yeah, the, yeah, the part of the adapt, the part of the yeah. primer, which is the barcode. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That four, five, yeah. six nuclei. Yeah. Just a, a quick question: Are there ever any indexing problems? Yes. Yeah. Uh, there are indexing problems when uh, there are new people that don't know that in the. Um, uh, that, that uh, in the, the documentation that Illumina provides, they give you the actual barcode sequence and they give you also the reverse complement and they will fill the reverse complement and then when you try to do demultiplexing, that thing will align. But there is a way to go and uh, sort all the 
find all, all the reads that didn't align and see what barcodes are there and then try to figure out what they did. Sometimes they're doing switches into the barcodes. So I, I, I had an example when somebody, instead of giving me index, oh, no, not giving me, instead of using the index I7 first and I5 second, they switched them and nothing was aligned and I was like, mm -hmm. what is going on? But it, you can, you, you, you will be able to, to figure it out. I mean, Illumina will help you with that. <laughs> I have command lines they send me. Any other questions for Lena? Yeah. I think that was very useful. Yes, thank you. That was the, that Even was though good. we will Thanks. never have to do it. <laughs> it's, it's good to have an idea. Yeah, it's good to have an idea. That's great. Thank you. Thank you.